My name is Colin Olliman. I'm a retired professor of chemical engineering from UBC. I'm also the co-inventor of the technology I'll be demonstrating to you today and the uh, scientific advisor for Mantra Alternative Energy Limited, who are the current owners of the technology related to this invention. This technology originated at the University of British Columbia in the period about 2004 to 2007 as a graduate research project uh, funded by the National Research Council of Canada and um, it was carried out by my graduate student, Hui Li, Dr. Hui Li. As a chemical engineer, I first became interested in the electrochemistry of carbon dioxide in about 2000. And that was when I started doing some calculations on the accumulation of carbon dioxide and heat in the atmosphere of Earth that is caused by the burning of fossil fuels. That calculation convinced me that we are facing a very serious problem in terms of climate change in the future. And uh, if the evidence of Hurricane Sandy, Typhoon Bofa, acidification of the oceans, the isotopic signature of fossil carbon are not enough to convince people, perhaps they should view the recently released movie called Chasing Ice. I think that if we don't lower the CO2 production, we're facing an increase of at least five centigrade degrees by 2100. And that would devastate our civilization. Well, carbon dioxide can be recycled to produce useful materials, such as formic acid or other valuable chemicals, and or fuels that will drive fuel cells. And uh, this process of ERC can therefore be made economically viable whereas just putting CO2 into the, into the ground is not. Fuel cells are devices that convert chemical energy into electrical energy. In conventional fuel cells, the energy is produced by combining a fuel and an oxidant that are fed to the um, fuel cell in separate streams and kept separate throughout the process. In a mixed reactant fuel cell, the fuel and the oxidant are mixed throughout the process. Mixed reactant fuel cells may have a lower energy efficiency than conventional fuel cells, but because of their simplicity, they can cut the capital cost of fuel cell systems by about 50%. Carbon dioxide will be reduced by electrochemical reduction to a solution of potassium formate. Then that solution of potassium formate will be used to power a mixed reactant fuel cell. Electric power from the fuel cell will then be used to turn on an LED light. This demonstration shows us that with non-fossil energy, carbon dioxide can be converted to a useful fuel that can then be used to drive a fuel cell. For this demonstration, I will first start the pumps and the carbon dioxide flow to the electrochemical reactor and check using the meters that the process is working smoothly. The mixture of carbon dioxide gas, the potassium carbonate solution, then flows through the ERC reactor cathode, while a solution of potassium carbonate flows through the reactor anode. The catholite and analyte liquids entering the reactor are sampled via three-way valves. The electric current is then turned on to the electrochemical reactor. After a few minutes, the catholite liquid leaving the reactor is sampled via three-way valve. The Reactor feed and product solutions are then tested visually using a potassium permanganate solution. The color change from purple to brown indicates the presence of the formate. If the catholite product does contain formate, then this formate fuel is mixed with the air oxidant and passed directly into the fuel cell by a three-way valve. Electric power from the fuel cell will then be used to turn on an LED light. The kind of places this process could be used, the electrochemical reduction of CO2, would be any plant that generates carbon dioxide. For example, a coal burning power plant, or a cement plant, or a brewery that so has to be driven by a non-fossil source of energy, like the sun, wind, tide, whatever. Clean energy, in other words. The idea is, is to have a closed loop of, um, of course, a regenerative fuel cell cycle, where you take um, a fuel cell, use it to make energy, but it produces CO2. The CO2 then goes back, is converted back to the fuel. Mantra Energy is continuing to develop this process and aims to install a pilot plant in 2013 
at the Lafarge Cement uh, Facility in Richmond, British Columbia. The electrochemical reduction of carbon dioxide is now only in the early stages of development. However, in the future, it has potential to help to solve the problem of man-made climate change. <music>